Spirit is only by your grace and your mercy that we can even sit here and have this type of a conversation. We've all been through, we all have our own journeys, Father God, and you've just been there the entire way and you've revealed yourself to us. You've shown us your salvation, Father God. If you, you've instilled inside of us, Father God, a love for others and a love for the truth, Father God. And we just cannot thank you enough. And we just take a message like you've placed on our heart this evening, Father. And we just ask that you would use it, that you would use it to touch others, Father, in the same way that you've touched us. And we give you every word. We give you all the glory, Father God, and all the praise. And we ask that you lead, you guide us, you inspire us. And Father, please, please complete the work in us that you have began and bring us, Father God, to the place where you would have us go, where we could be in your will, Father God. So we just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Wow, praise God, man. <laughs> I love you guys so much. There's a popular teaching right now that says if your spouse or family member has received of the abomination, right? That you can legally and you should divorce them or kick them out or just totally banish them from the family, okay? And this is the scripture that it references. That scripture right out the gate, right out the gate, Jesus says your right eye and Jesus says your right hand, okay? If you pluck your right eye out and you cut your right hand off, you're still gonna sin with the left eye. You're still gonna sin with the left hand. If you pluck the left eye out and cut the left hand off, you're still going to sin because the sin isn't in the eye or the hand. The sin is in the heart. And that's what Jesus is trying to address here. Right? So this is what Jesus is addressing in the scripture. And somehow in the body of Christ today, we're, we're having husbands divorce wives, wives divorce husbands, parents, you know, ban banishing children from their families because of a medical choice they chose to make, right? And, and this is the scripture that they're using to back this teaching. And I think that we should address it. But if you look at Proverbs, in Proverbs um, 6, it talks about the abominations of God. Mm. The very last one that he speaks about is divide, division. Division is an abomination of God. If you can read that, what is a true an abomination to God? It says a false witness who speaks lies and one who sows discord amongst the brethren. Now, do you think, now, do you think these teachers on YouTube, whomever it may be, if they had a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, had a relationship with the true word of God, because the true word of God is what we declare to be true, would be speaking half of what they're speaking. Yeah. Because those things right there that you mentioned in Proverbs, fear me. And those are the things I look at in my heart saying, Lord, I don't, I don't want anything to be an abomination to you. So if you look at the big picture of these things, when people start speaking on their platform, are they showing any of those abominations? So Tina, let me ask you this then. What would you say to a brother or sister in the Lord Jesus Christ who's, who's, hearing this and they're they're on the fence and they're thinking and they don't know you know what i mean what would you say to that person who's um throwing that back and forth in their mind about divorce over uh because their their spouse received the you know what you know don't divide god says that don't divide don't cause division don't don't do any of that but to love one another because love covers a multitude of sin Amen. Amen. I do have a scripture too that I want to share when you talk about that divide. Uh, Matthew uh, 19. I say to you, this is Jesus speaking. I say unto you, whosoever shall put his wife away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth 
commit adultery. So the only reason that he says to put the wife away is fornication. And what he brings together, let no man put asunder. I also too feel for like some of those that are doing these teachings, because in James 3, 1, it says, don't count that you be a teacher knowing that you'll be held to a stricter judgment, right? Amen. I don't know about you guys, but that puts the fear of God. I mean, when I think about that, yes. I'm, you think about some of these last days doctrines that are going around right now and that younger believers are hearing this stuff and seeing this stuff. And it just makes, I don't, it just sort of sickens me a little bit. You know what I mean? And I feel bad for these people too. I feel like there's a spirit out there, the accuser of the brethren spirit where, you know, um, Satan, he likes to, you know, tell people they're going to hell. He likes to accuse them, you know, even before uh, the father. That's why Jesus Christ is the advocate. And so I think people are taking heed to that. And um, we just have to be really careful not to. Um, and I think a lot of these YouTube uh, uh, ministries are reaching uh, for things instead of just sticking to the word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's so much to say about that. <laughs> like what you just said is really important, sticking to the word of God. Now, even in the book of Revelations, it says don't add to or take away from this book. And the, cons the consequences are extremely <laughs> severe to the point that when I even have these types of conversations, I have that same fear, Tina, that you feel in Proverbs 6, because it's so important to have proper discernment. You know, Matt and I and Lisa have spoken about this in regards to videos that I've posted about the mark specifically and how like I needed confirmation and I had to call you guys and pray about it before posting some of this stuff because just the thought of having it wrong and throwing yeah. it out there really shakes me to my core because that fear is real. It's, it's real and we have a big responsibility. Um, but when you speak about adding to, we have to be careful about what we share, right? Especially if we're calling it the mark right whether it is or it isn't it just you have to be accurate in what you're putting out there you know god the lord jesus the blood of lord the lord jesus his blood can heal restore and from what i have experienced in my life i've seen jesus heal cancer for many people hallelujah fourth, fourth stage mm -hmm. prostate cancer you know, I, I, I've seen that. I, I've seen that. I, I've seen the blood of Jesus raise people from the dead. I, I've seen the blood of Jesus do miracles in people's bodies that you would never experience when praying over them. Yeah. And cancer and these other things that people had that Jesus healed was more complex than what's in the Amen. And I'll tell you that. Because when someone's on their deathbed with fourth stage prostate cancer and they, the doctor has given them a month to live and they live another eight, ten years, that's the blood of Jesus. Yeah. When you've seen 18 tumors that someone has through their body and the doctor has given them a death sentence of two weeks and they're still alive today to talk about it and the doctors can't explain how these tumors have disappeared. But I can because it's the blood of Jesus. It's the Lord Jesus Christ that healed that person. You can't tell me the Lord Jesus cannot heal what's ever in that person that has taken that. Hallelujah. And we tell people, oh, no, your your sins aren't forgiven because of this. Oh, well, let me tell you, I'm here to tell you today that your sins are forgiven because of this. Amen. With repentance. And it's healing by the blood of Jesus. Because when I stand there and I look at Jesus, I'm going to tell him, no, Jesus, your blood shed on the cross was not in vain. It can heal anything you want. Amen. There's not one scientist. There's not one doctor. There's not one person that can tell me, a mere mortal can tell me, that the blood of Jesus is not going to heal you with repentance. Amen. If Amen. we humble ourselves he will heal you. If you humble yourselves, he will hear you. God will have mercy on whom he has mercy. He chooses oh. not a mere mortal. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Sorry. 
Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Keep <Yeah>. going. <laughs> Keep going. Amen. The power belongs to the Lord, not yeah. us. That's yeah. right. When I have a mere mortal ask me a question saying, this person that took the that took the mark, they're going to go to heaven because they were a Baptist or they were a Catholic. They didn't know. And I'm, I'm telling this person, why are you saying that to begin with? Because Jesus can heal anyone he wants to heal with his blood, with true repentance. And all the way until Revelation 16, it says repentance. Mm -hmm. He requires repentance. And if it takes you to get on your face and sit there and beg and plead with him and ask him to forgive you of your sins, he will grant you that with true repentance. And that's it. I've seen things. I've, I've seen things that will blow your mind. You know, guy, he'll do whatever he wants. It's his will. It's the bloodshed of Jesus. The bloodshed of Jesus on the cross. And how do we say to someone that their sins are not forgiven? How do we say that to another mere mortal? We are, how we do we not. say? And how do we say, oh, I'm sorry, you, you're taking that. Um, there's nothing I can do for you, really. So in Judgment Day, you're going to stand there in front of our King, our Lord and Savior, and you say, sorry, Lord, I told him there was nothing I could do. Think about oh. it. If we reverse that role, yeah. right? If we, we tell everyone to repent. We, we teach the King. We, we, we tell people about repentance. We tell them what Jesus did on the cross. I'm not going to stop teaching repentance. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Right, and the word says we don't judge who comes up. He says you don't judge who goes up and who goes down. Amen. <laughs> That's very clear. Romans 10, 6 and 7, but the righteous, which is a righteousness, which is a faith, speaketh on this wise, say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Or, who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring Christ again from the dead god is the just judge eternal of the universe not us we're just the dust of the earth Amen. so when Amen. we when we sit in the seat of judgment judging for that same measure that we pass judgment the lord shall render unto us what about the children who are be or who are given this and they're so young they haven't even reached the age of accountability yet yeah that's another um point. what about the the elderly who have alzheimer's who are given this um, without even their consent? Um, you know, what what about them? So, you know, Matthew and I for for a while were really, you know, thinking that maybe this was. But we have to be careful. We have to humble ourselves. We can't dig our heels in because of pride. You know, because we're all trying to figure this out together. Judgment is without mercy for one who has shown no mercy. Right? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's that's a that's a uh, open the door and close the door scripture in this scenario. Um, you know, it's inadvertently, I think a lot of um, well-meaning Christians, you know, uh, that are deceived, you know, are um, how should I put this? Because it's heavy. It's really heavy. You know, Tina always reminds us that the love of God never fails. You know, it never fails. You just said that no created thing, right, can separate you from that love. Come on. Right? We, we forget that love is the most powerful thing in the universe. It is the very essence of God himself, right? Yeah. And what you're actually doing when you tell someone that the blood on the cross cannot save them or will not atone for that sin or any sin is you're denying them of the love that the father is that's right you're denying them of love the most powerful thing in the universe imagine that <laughs> and we know that when we follow the commandments that our father gave us that we actually abide in his love his love becomes a part of us, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're actually when you're telling somebody that they they don't measure up, they don't meet this mark, and there's nothing that Jesus can do for them as their mediator, 
You're denying them Christ as a mediator. You're denying the blood that was shed on the cross and you're denying them of love from the Father. Well, in 1 Corinthians 13, it describes the it describes love. Love is patient, it's kind. It is it does not envy, it's joyful. It's not boastful or proud, but humble. It isn't self-seeking, but selfless. It isn't easily angered, but meek and gentle and self-controlled. It keeps no record of wrongs. It forgives, it trusts, it hopes, it perseveres. That's how Jesus loved us. And those are also the fruits of the Spirit. So the fruits of the Spirit fall under that love. And if, if we're denying the if we're denying God to work his love through us, then we're not showing the love of Christ to people. Amen. Amen. That's a big amen right there. That's that says it all. Mm -hmm. If we're denying them that. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not in putting their trespasses to them, and has committed to us, that's us, the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled unto God. So why would a God who brings the whole earth reconciled to himself have this thing and be like, no, let's divide the family over this one little thing. It doesn't make any sense at all. I don't understand. And I'm sorry, I'm very passionate about this. I don't understand how God's people can, can be so deceived and so blinded by the tricks and the lies and the snares of the enemy and not be spending time with the Lord in the secret place to get confirmation on these words. We live in the last days and the Lord warned us that there's going to be many false prophets, just like in ancient Israel and in Ezekiel 34, there were false shepherds leading God's people. We see that now, and this is what's happening now. And this is what's destroying the family now. And like you said, Tina is taking away from the power of the atoning blood of the lamb of God who was shed on our behalf. There's nothing, no, no created thing can stop it. And God's people is saying there's the created thing. That can, and it's it's a lie from the pit of hell. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You and just we, made me think of a scripture, uh, Matthew, when you shared those, when you were talking just now in 2 Corinthians 4. Um, you were just talking, and why can't they see this? Mm -hmm. It says, because if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. People cannot see the magnitude of the love of Jesus Christ in them, the, the immeasurable blood, the immeasurable love that he shed. So that reminds me of that scripture, because when it says in Matthew 24, when the love of many will wax cold, mm -hmm. he says they will see in, in second Thessalonians uh, chapter two, I believe, or chapter. It says you will receive a strong delusion because they will receive a strong delusion because they refuse to accept the love of the truth mm. that love wow the very elect can be deceived if it were possible but it's not because the very elect are not deceived because they do have the love of the truth they know that christ's blood is immeasurable Ooh. they know not to decide who goes up and who goes down mm. they know that god hates divorce and would never separate and put asunder what he put together but you know what? They look for excuses because they refuse to accept the love, the profound love of the truth. You know, even right now, as the people are listening to this, Lisa, it's resonating even in their spirit. You know what I mean? That, And that's why we have so many that are offended by this, because deep in, deep in their heart, you can't lie to God. You can't lie to the Holy Spirit of the living God who lives inside of you. And, and they know the sound of truth. I know. Yeah, no, we have to seek the heart of God in every matter. You know, it really, really it. boils down to that. You know, like when you're when you're reading the word of God, it's renewing your mind. Right. And you're able yeah. to understand and see the will of God in every matter. I think I, I wrote it down. I think it's in Ephesians. It says, uh, don't be a fool. Understand the will of God. 
right? Sounds so simple, <laughs> but it's like a quest <laughs> that we go on day in and day out. We read his yep. word and we understand the heart of God in different matters as we grow. We understand how to like what it means to fear the Lord, right? And we can see God's heart in different matters. And I think that is really the key. And when, you know, when you're taking answers from the world and you're listening to what the media has given you and whatever YouTube prophet has to say and so on and so forth, you know, oftentimes if you're not grounded in the word of truth, you'll actually start to feel a little bit of fear, right? You'll start mm. to feel confused, right? These words are not words to describe our heavenly father, right? Um, and if you're starting to feel division or content towards a brother, or if you're starting to, you know, sow discord <laughs> amongst the brethren, there's a good chance that, you know, you need to go back to the secret place and spend a little more time understanding the will of God and the heart of God in every matter, you know, and that's really what it boils down to is just encouraging people to say, whoa, before you do this thing that you want to do, your flesh is saying, hey, I need to leave this person or I can't allow that person into my home based on, you know, things that you, that are hearsay. You, know, you need to step back and wait and hear from the Lord first. You know, that really is, I think, the wise thing to do, you know? Amen. 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 I have one other, one other thing I have to share that came across. The, I think I mentioned this to Matt the other day. Uh, we have an example with Moses in the Old Testament, right? Um, the Israelites were complaining to God about Moses and God. And God responded by sending a, a plague of serpents, right? And so all of these individuals were getting snake bitten, right? And um, Moses created a, a staff with a bronze serpent. And whoever looked upon that serpent or that staff, that image, would be healed, right? And I didn't realize this till today, but I looked in John, the famous John 3, 16, and I actually read the verses before it. And it says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so like Moses in the wilderness with his staff and the stake, right? The snake, Jesus is saying, the son of man is to be looked, is to be raised up as well. It's actually, I was um, praying one night and I just uh, decided to just play my instrument to the Lord, you know, just pray silently and just play to him. And when I got done, he, I heard Psalm 117, just to hear it whisper in my spirit, Psalm 117, I turned to it, and the song that I had played him was just coming off of, he, he was giving everything. Um, it ended up being, it fit with the music perfectly, so I'll grab my guitar and share that with y'all again.
merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endures. 